and welcome to another episode of The Four Points. I'm your host, Emily Owsley, and today I have with me Miss Oklahoma, Kelsey Griswold. How are you doing today? I'm doing so good. Thank honey. you so much for being oh, here. I'm, I'm so really happy. excited. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to talk to you about every little detail about pageants. <laughs> here we go. Uh, we'll just jump right into it. Mm -hmm. um, Why did you start pageants? Tell okay. us a little bit about that. Well, I started when I was 13 years old, and a big thing about pageants for me when I first started, I mean, I every little girl wants to be Miss America. Every little girl, I think, has that little has that dream, and so um, there are a bunch of factors that made me want to continue to do pageants, which I love to perform, and it also you get amazing scholarship, and then that's really why I came back to pageants after about a four-year break coming to Miss Oklahoma. I really just needed more scholarship and just that that opportunity to sing. Is that stage. the reason you came to OCU? Yeah, not pageants. Not necessarily was the reason because I had wanted to go since I was eight years old, and I adore Kristen Chenoweth and Kelly O'Hara. I was a huge Broadway fan when I was young, and so um, yeah, that was the biggest reason I came. But getting scholarship for Oklahoma City University for Miss Oklahoma's Outstanding Teen, I that was a big factor as to why I came. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're preparing for whether it be Miss Oklahoma or Miss America, what did your daily schedule look like? It was absolutely crazy. It was nuts because you would have to get up like 5 a.m. And I mean, there were appearances every single day, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And only until like the last month before the before the actual national pageant, we had appearances all the time. You would be working out early in the morning, tanning body trends, and then making sure that your your outfits were aligned. You were going shopping all the time. I was always in Dallas because there were a bunch of people there that were helping me out. So it was a very rigorous process, a crazy three months before the pageant. Yeah. What was your week like at Miss America? Well, I mean, it's a two-week, like, fest of pageant girls galore. 53 mm -hmm. women in one area together for two weeks is nuts. But we were in rehearsal constantly, and the first week where we were there, we just had a blast. Like, it was appearances after appearances and dinners and getting to know everyone in Atlantic City and touring the place, and we got to go to a Phillies game and everything. I mean, it was just, they kept us so... They kept us very, very happy, very, very entertained. But yeah, it was, it was by the time competition started, it was nuts. Yeah. What was your favorite part of competing? Like, what phase of competition was your favorite? I loved talent. I love <clears throat> talent always because I love to sing. I bare my soul when I sing. It's my favorite thing to do. Mm -hmm. But I did learn throughout this process to really love interviewing. I used to really hate it. Um, I used to suck pretty badly. <laughs> but I, w I went in there and I just decided I was going to be 100% myself because there's no way that I could lose. You know, you try to trip me up and, and I'm just going to give you my heart. I'm going to give you myself because that's all I could do, you know? Right. Was there any one particular question that they threw at you that you just didn't really know what to do? Yeah. There were a few moments when I was caught pretty dead in my tracks because I remember, you know, they brought up my mom and she had passed away when I was 15. And you know, I love talking about her because she, she taught me how to be this this powerful, charismatic woman. Well, I brought up the word charisma. And then they said, how did she teach you how to be charismatic? And I was like, it almost felt like an attack. So I like had to stop and, and think about it. And, and no, normally when pageant girls stop and think about a question, it's like the saying is you think you die. So like, don't think. But I stopped and think and I, I, I didn't know what to say. And I just kind of stood there and I looked at him and I was like, well, my mother was very special and she taught me many things and I just had to cut it from there. And then they started asking me about Syria and I was like, how do you get those two <laughs> correlated? That doesn't make any sense. That's but, what I was going to ask you if they threw any political questions at you. Oh yeah. I mean, it was the craziest interview of my life. Like it was, and I haven't really had that many in the Miss mm -hmm. program. That was like my third Miss or fourth Miss interview ever. So I, they asked me a bunch of political things, mm -hmm. a lot of personal questions, but it was it was just zing, 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 zing all the time. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I had, I had a great time, but by the time I left, it, it, I was shaky. I, yeah. was, I was crying, and it was very emotional. Yeah. So I don't know if everybody watched Miss America, but your onstage question, mm -hmm. they announced that they thought every question was equal, that everybody had an equal opportunity. Do you feel like your question was really as equal as everybody else's question? I'll say this. I... I said a prayer backstage right before I went on, and I said, Lord, I really want you to allow me to show this country and these judges my personality. He gave me that question, 
so I could show the world my personality. I think that I honestly, I didn't, I, I knew that the possibility of me getting a political question was very high mm -hmm. and I knew what to answer about everything. I right. had some, I had something to say about everything, but that was something I hadn't really practiced. And my best friend, Miss Alabama, she all week long was saying these twerking jokes. She was like, you know, it just wasn't twerking for me. She thought it was so funny. And I was like, I'm honoring her right now, and I'm going to say this joke. <laughs> and I did, and she was bawling backstage. She's like, I love you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I was like, I know. It's got the lover. So let's rewind back to Miss Oklahoma. Tell us a little bit about that week. What was going through your head the entire week before I, you won? I had a lot of support mm -hmm. um, from the moment I was crowned Miss Bricktown OKC to the week of Miss Oklahoma, I had people that truly, I've never seen people gather together for no other particular reason than the fact that they just believed that I could do it mm -hmm. um, and just come together and build me up. And I felt very supported. I knew the possibility of me winning was there, but it's there for everyone. If you're there, then there's a possibility. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But um, after my interview, I thought, well, that went well. And it wasn't like, it wasn't anything exciting. It was just a very calm, peaceful feeling. I won swimsuit and I was like, that same feeling came over me at Miss America. I was like, <laughs> I couldn't understand. And then I won talent, and I was like, okay, then I feel like they're obviously, mm -hmm. they, they are putting, they're, they're putting their, their cards forward. And I knew by the final night, it was, uh, it, I had that, that peaceful feeling. Mm -hmm. I just, I had, I had a weird feeling that it might happen, so. So now that Miss America's over, it's kind of different now because normally Miss America is in January. Mm -hmm. So you have a couple of uh, months before you give up your title, but now you have a lot of months before you give up your title. Yeah. What does the rest of your year look like? Well, I am very blessed to have the opportunity to be able to go around to schools and assemblies all over the, all over the state. And um, I'm talking about my, pro my platform and my program, which is Oklahoma Cares for Children. And we cover things, you know, like how to accomplish your dreams, how to reach your goals, how to stay healthy and things like that. And it's really good to be able to talk to them from my perspective. But um, I've talked to kids from pre-K all the way through 12th grade. And um, it's been an interesting transition to be able to share my heart and share my story. And it's only confirming that this was the plan all to, you know, all along, so. So you're just talking and there's not a whole lot of working out or anything anymore. Oh, well, the thing is, I love to work out because I have to fit into my clothes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really, I, mean, I have no choice. I, 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 I like to work out because it, it de-stresses me. I will say this. I would just turn my nose up at cake and donuts for the longest time. That doesn't happen that much anymore. So I'm, I'm always down for the donuts and the cake and the cupcakes and things like that. So that has changed a bit for me. Awesome. Yeah. Well, is there anything else that you want to chat about being Miss Oklahoma and moving on this year? Well, you know, my plan for the next, you know, few years, hopefully, of my life that I've kind of got set up is I am graduating in May with a bachelor's in fine arts, and um, I'll be moving out to L.A. My hope is to get my master's in fine arts at UCLA, and uh, I'll be my, and then another hope, and then the plan is to sign with an agency called William Morris, Ag William Morris Agency, and then hopefully by, for then I'll be able to set my career and get the ball rolling. So. Awesome. Well, thank you for chatting with me. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to get to hear a little bit of Kelsey's talent from Miss America. Stay tuned. Meet Sarah Jane. She got her vision checked at school by Prevent Blindness Oklahoma. Prevent Blindness Oklahoma provides free vision screenings to children in all 77 counties in the state. Without this free screening, Sarah Jane's parents wouldn't know about her congenital cataracts. Because of Prevent Blindness Oklahoma and their screening, Sarah Jane will be seeing clear for years to come. Preserving sight, preventing blindness, making every child's vision count. Welcome back to The Four Points. I'm your host, Emily Owsley, and I have today here with me Miss Oklahoma, Kelsey Griswold, and she's going to get into her talent here pretty quick. But first, why this talent? This song is kind of my anthem for my, my journey at Miss Oklahoma and Miss America. A million and one people told me that I couldn't be Miss Oklahoma, that I would never be Miss America. And this is my song to say, who says, you know, who says I can't do that? And this is my song for everyone else that says, hmm. Well, this is Kelsey Griswold singing Everybody Says Don't from Anyone Can Whistle. Take it away.
Everybody says don't, everybody says don't, everybody says don't walk on the grass, don't disturb the peace, don't skate on the ice. Well, I say do, I say walk on the grass that was meant to feel, I say sail, jump to the windmill and if you fail, you fail. Kelsey, just as good as it was at Miss America. <laughs> when we come back, we're gonna hear some tips and tricks from Kelsey about competing in pageants, so stay with us. I was looking for a way to help out with my community while also getting close with my gal pals. I've been looking for an addition in my life that can make things more lively. I wanted a companion to curl up with at night. That's why we adopted these guys. Research shows that women love cute little things. So what's wrong with you? Get a guy who's guaranteed to stay. Welcome back to the Four Points. I have again here with me Miss Oklahoma, Kelsey Griswold. So we're going to get into the tips and tricks now of pageantry, which is my favorite part of this show because it's more fun. Uh, is that more fun? Is that I think it's politically more fun. Fair, correct? Well, it's funner. <laughs> it's funner. It's funner. It's a funner part of the, it's a funner the, part show. Of the show. Okay, so we're going to do tips and either or tip or trick for each phase of the competition. So interview. Give it to us. Uh, the first thing that you need to do is you need to breathe because if you don't breathe, A, you will pass out and also your answers sound like, I love a god is a boom. That's not an answer, <laughs> but that's exactly what happens in an interview if you don't breathe. Also, take a minute when they're asking you something that you don't know the answer to, don't say something that is false or BS. Say you know, I don't know. That's okay. They want you to be honest so about don't, everything. Don't else. make something up. Don't make anything up. Don't ever lie because <laughs> it, it will always come back to you. Always. Somehow. Very you interesting. In the butt. Okay, so next would be on stage question. Okay, that's a okay. That's my one of my least favorite topics of of competition. I'm not very good <laughs> at it. Uh, my thing is for on stage question, you need to listen to the question because sometimes it'll trip you up. And, and just answer it as evenly and as shortly and as concisely as possible. Do not make it long, because no one cares what you're saying. The longer you talk, the more uncomfortable the audience and the judges will be. Interesting. I know. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next would be swimsuit. Okay, swimsuit, as much as everyone thinks that they need to like starve themselves and like work out eight times a day, that's not what, how you win swimsuit. It's just not. I did not have the best body at Miss America. However, I did win the swimsuit competition in my, in my preliminary. And that was because my walk and my attitude were just on point. You feel that music and then you shine. Shine and walk with a confidence that only you can bring to that stage. That's the only way you win swimsuit. So it's more about having the confidence in your body rather than the way your body looks. Right, you work with what you've got. I have curves, I'm not a stick thin girl, but I love the way my body looks. I like the way that it moves when it's on stage. And so I exuded that confidence to people and to the judges that were judging it that night. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next is talent. Mm -hmm. With talent, if you ever, I mean, first of all, obviously the number one thing that I can say to anyone is practice until you cannot practice anymore and then practice some more. That's what everything that you want to do, everything you want to do well in in life, you need to put practice into it. But you can't expect to get points in the 
heaviest part of competition, which is talent as far as points go, if you don't practice, because the practice comes with the confidence. The majority of the points that you earn come from your confidence. They don't come from your skill set. So that's really what I say, so practice, practice, practice. That's a big tip to learn, mm -hmm. definitely. For okay, sure. so the last phase is evening gown. Evening gown, first and foremost, girls, do not, under any circumstances, buy a dress that you don't like <laughs> and that does not fit. Do not buy it. If it doesn't, if you don't like it and if it doesn't fit, if it's too long, you will trip. If it's too heavy, then it's gonna fall off of you. If it's too tight, you won't be able to breathe and people can tell. And I mean, th there are just factors into like what you wear and it is all about how you carry yourself. You could wear a gunny sack and if it makes you feel <laughs> like a princess, you will look like a princess. Perfect. Okay, so now for overall competition, mm -hmm. what's a tip, in, tip or trick that you have? It's very cliche to hear that you are, want to be yourself throughout the whole process, but that's the truth. Because once you lose yourself, the pageant might as well not exist. Um, the thing with me at Miss America was, you know, there are there a lot of uh, people in the news and newspaper articles and TV shows that were covering this shot that I had of my face um, near a statue where I was like making this face. <laughs> and I, that's just me, that's my personality, and I was never gonna hide that from anyone. Um, that's a big factor, though, of how well I did at Miss America was because I just never gave up on who I was. Um, I have other, you know, other little things. For, for girls that are starting to do pageants, um, biggest things that I didn't understand when I was doing pageants when I first started out, um, first and foremost, you need to do more spray tan than you think you, <laughs> than you, think you need. Because on stage, you get washed out, and then the tanner you are, the smaller you look, and the more confidence you get in the end. That's the biggest thing I didn't know. Like, I put, like, a hot, like, a thin layer of spray tan. I thought that was enough, and I looked pale as a sheet. Um, also, line your lips, because if you don't line your lips, they bleed into the rest of your face. So, like, some people look like they just have a lower face. But you need to have lips, ladies. If you don't have lips, then you just have... <laughs> that doesn't look good, does it? No, <laughs> it doesn't look good. You want to have lips. On you want to have lips, and then I mean, I over exaggerate everything because on stage it looks better if you have more makeup, bigger hair, harsher spray tan. I know that sounds strange, but on stage it looks so much better. In person, you may look like a clown, but on stage you look amazing. Tone it all down for interview. Bump it up for the final night. Perfect. Okay, so what's the Probably, I'm gonna say, like the weirdest tip or trick that you have for somebody competing, like most odd thing. Okay, so for swimsuit, y'all. Okay, here I'm gonna sit up for this because it's important. <laughs> for swimsuit, above everything else, we all know about, most of us should know about butt glue, correct? Butt glue is what keeps the swimsuit down. It makes, it almost covers the cellulite that you've got going down over there. Like all of us have it, it's not a secret. And you just, I mean, you've gotta make sure that the butt glue's like ready to go. However, the biggest thing is, how do you get the butt glue off? It stays on there for days. And the biggest thing is, I've learned, is cold cream and Vaseline. Cold cream and Vaseline. You're done. Like cold cream as in like hand lotion? Like like Pond's cold cream or Vaseline. I, I like to use Vaseline because I have little tubs of it. And you can just, okay, and you're done. And, this, and your evening gown gets right on and your talent gets right. I mean, like your outfits slide on and they don't have like the stick em. Yeah, wow. it, if you don't have it, then it will stick on you forever and then, then you go to bed and you're like, why can't I get out of bed? I'm stuck and it's because of the butt glue. Right, wow, that's a great tip. <laughs> <laughs> I just never knew that. Good it's to so, know. It's important to know. Yes, Very important. of course. All right, Kelsey, well, thank you so much for being here today. It was great talking to you. It was good talking to you. All right, well, we're, that's really all we have for today, folks. So uh, thanks for joining us on The Four Points. We'll see you next time.